together, it really, really works. I think there is a difference because we don't have small children at home. We really do enjoy working yeah. together. But you guys are proving us wrong. Teach us. <laughs> um, well, first of all, welcome to the podcast. I wanted to uh, turn the heat up to like make it really hot in here to see what you can handle. So welcome. Yeah. You know, Thank you. That's what we expected. So by the way, but like people are like, oh, you have a big room where you do a pot. No, like it's a small room. Yeah. Right? You can't tell. You can't tell from the camera yeah. lens though, right? It's just yeah. like six it's by eight. wide lens. Yeah, six by eight. It's a little hot box. It's just yeah. like real estate photography. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, right? That's the magic of the camera. That's right. That's Good to see you guys. Good to, Good to see, see you. you. Yeah. It's been a while. It's, it's been great. a while. Yeah. Great to see you guys. Always enjoyed my time yeah. with you guys. Um, we got to do our dinner, our yes. annual dinner soon. Yes, we do. Uh, we, always the where best. We, where are we going this time? Ah, I mean, look, you guys always go to the best place. I just like to be educated and learn. Maybe should we mix it up though? Go to a different spot. I think That's so. A great idea. Absolutely. Yeah. It's good to see you guys. So, so yeah. So we got. So we have a couple here, uh, and in the real estate world, you have your own team. What are the advantages and disadvantages of working with a significant other? Now, let me also point out that I tried to take off work for a year before we started Ally Title, and I was going to hang out at home with my wife, and after a week, she's like, get out of this house and never come back. And so we would not be the best to work together, but you guys are proving us wrong. Teach us. I think there is a difference because we don't have small children at home, yeah. so that helps. Yeah. And we really do enjoy working yeah. together. We enjoy sp even you know just free time. We like to be together. I think it works because we have similar personalities, but also very different mm -hmm. in that the way we work with clients, and so we each bring different strengths to to meeting with clients. And those strengths in the marriage and in work are they the same? Are they different? I think so. Yeah, I think they're probably the same. Yeah. Yeah. Janet, like she silos stuff, she compartmentalizes stuff very well. Mm -hmm. She's also very detail oriented. I'm more of a 30,000 foot view guy and I'm more of a broad picture guy. Yeah. And I think working by myself, I can be more detailed. Working by herself, she can be more broad, but together it really, really mm -hmm. works very well. Nice. So we kind of oversee each other, making sure that we don't miss anything. And I think the clients really like that. Nice. Yeah, and when we're together, not work, it's it's similar, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we we just genuinely enjoy each other. We like bouncing ideas off each other because yeah. we have different styles. I, I think that works. At the end of the day, we we can leave the real estate behind. Yeah, that's um, what I was wondering. Yeah. So dinner yeah. time, yeah. are you you're out? You maybe a glass of wine. You go to a nice restaurant. Are you able to cut it off, or is that is it really? 100%. Is that a rule in the family? It's not a rule. Yeah. It just happens. Yeah, it just happens. It just happens. I think it ha I think it's because we also like to spend every moment with with each other outside of work. Yeah. And so you know you have to kind of cut it off, otherwise it just becomes all about work. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so we, the, the way we entertain, the way we interact with our friends and and the kids, it just. It's just kind of a natural progression to, okay, the day's over, mm -hmm. and now we're going to do whatever we're going to do. With it. And real estate never really enters into the yeah. picture. Yep. It's funny, at home we each have an office, but we end up working at the um, kitchen bar together. Yeah. Because it's like riffing ideas, like, what do you think about sense. this? Help yeah. me with yeah. this. You have experience, you know, like we have different experiences, and so we can definitely get ideas from each other, whereas being a solo agent and not being with your, I mean, obviously if you're a team, you can still talk to your team members, but we're pretty much together, you know, we're in the same house. Yeah. So kind of talking about, you know, how you work together, and just, I actually don't know the background on this and the history. Have you guys both been in real estate for a long time? I know you had a previous career in the, in the tech industry, is that right? Yeah, so I was in government contracting, okay. so the IT, and I had a um, career in finance for 22 okay. years. Um, same company. And, and I loved it. And then after 22 years, I was like, I think I want to try something different. I have no experience in sales. Yeah. I still feel like I'm not a salesperson. Did you always have a love for real estate? No. No? Okay. No, I never even bought a house. It was a big transition, but it felt very natural because it was about people um, relating, just getting, you know, getting close to people and helping people achieve their dreams. And I have a huge network from that 22 years. Mm -hmm of contracting that I really tapped into and that I've helped a lot of those folks um, in real estate. So really working the sphere was important for you. Oh, and, yeah. And yeah, and I think back at that time you had joined another team previously and mm -hmm. then you guys went off and created your own team in the past mm -hmm. couple years, yep. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So when you joined the other team, was that a helpful at that time? Oh. Yes, it, it was because I had no yeah. I had no experience. 
And so that was really great and just teaching me and, and I had people to lean on. Um, and you know, if I was not sure of what to say at a, um, a listing appointment or a meeting with a buyer, those teammates were there to help. And, and I found that really um, advantageous for me. Nice. And then your career in real estate, Long, longer career? Longer career. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a little bit older. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, 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 you can't tell. I mean, we've already talked about this. Like, he, he shared his apparent age with us you know, last year. And then I was like, that's not true. <laughs> so I think you've been in the business eight years, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been in 15 years. Okay, so I, got, cool. I jumped into the business at the worst possible time in 2008. Mm -hmm. Intentionally, it just happened to be a bad time. So, yeah, I've been doing it 15 years. And I've had, like, three career, careers before that. I was in finance as well. I was in IT, um, and I was a personal shopper, so I was in retail. Cool. Did you guys know each other when you were in those IT then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. Awesome. And then tell me about the retail. Like personal shop. You said personal shop. So personal, so yeah. So, so is this why you always have tailored stuff that looks great? You know, <laughs> yeah. maybe a little. And I don't okay. know how I came to this because my family's okay. not into fashion at all. It just kind of evolved. But yeah, so I uh, was a personal shopper at Saks Fifth Avenue in Tyson's Corner, for both men and women. and. I, I've always been in sales and in management, and I always liked it. I like uh, in relationship sales specifically. Right. And I, at one point, I decided I wanted to get into real estate, which I thought would be the best yep. form of relationship sales for me. Started to build my client base at um, in Tyson's as yep. at Sex Fifth Avenue, and I thought I would parlay that into real estate. Well, I got in two thousand eight. Yeah, I haven't had one client from Sex Fifth Avenue become a buyer or seller. <laughs> so it kind of yeah. it kind of. Backfired on me, but I weathered that storm, and so far it's it's gone so well. We heard you're an avid reader. I am. Tell me about it. what are you reading? What do you recommend today? How much? How often do you read books a month? I do have this habit of reading between two or three books at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, Interesting. but I do. So I just yeah. finished um, David Baldacci's uh, Long Shadows. It's okay. the it's the Memory Man series, which I highly recommend. I just mm -hmm. finished uh, John Grisham's Boys from Biloxi. I'm currently reading Alex Carr's Only the Dead. So those are um, ones like Detective, uh, Only the Dead is a, a series, um, James Reese, who's an ex-seal. Yep. Um, it's very prescient, actually. The, the, yeah. the, um, the novel is corresponding to exactly what's happening in the world right now. It yeah. was written a year ago. So it's pretty fascinating. So, yeah. you know, I like, I, like, um, I like Grisham and Baldacci, as I said, I like Michael Connolly. John Ludlum, Lee Childs. Combination you know, of fiction and nonfiction? It's almost all fiction. Yeah, okay. it's all, I mean, my fiction would be uh, business books that some, yeah. I mean, sorry, my nonfiction would be business books that people would recommend. Yeah. Did I say that a little backwards? No, you got okay. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that my, people say, you know, you should really read this. And when I'm in coaching, you know, I was yeah. with Ninja, they'd recommend books. So I don't gravitate towards those. I rarely yeah. reach out to them. I probably should to round it out a little bit. But the uh, the um, the fiction kind of breaks up what's going on in real life. Do you think you ever get them mixed up while you're reading multiple books? Like, ah, is that, or is another thing? No. No. Because I watch TV yeah. series at the same time. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. like different TV yes, series. Yes, exactly. And it's the same thing. Mixed up. Right, same <laughs> thing. Yeah, we're, I'm watching Bosch. I can't read, so I'm trying to figure out like, <laughs> Like how it actually yeah. works. I'm watching Bosch Legacy, uh, okay. which I like, which is Michael Connolly, by the way. And yep. we're watching Griselda. Yep. And so, yeah, is that good? I mean, that, I see it, it on Netflix good. all the time. It is good. Yeah. I, if I'm you wrong. like intense, like, yeah, yeah narco stuff. Yeah, yeah. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but I, I, don't really, I don't really get that mixed up. Every once in a while, I may have to go back a page or two, but mm -hmm. the stories are so dissimilar that it kind of keeps it in check. I was never good at uh, reading mm -hmm. growing up, and like I can, I'll just read pages, and like I have no idea what I just read. Yep. Does that happen to someone like you who's yep. like an avid reader, oh, yeah. where you're like you're like not paying attention, but you're Absolutely. actually just reading? That's Absolutely. Oh yeah. If okay. I'm not present, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll read it. Like what? It's just like the TV show. Well, you know, yeah. you watch it. Like what? I wasn't rewind a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you have ADD? I have to. You must. I mean, like well, I, I never. Think, I think you do. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> I do. I've I've never gotten diagnosed with it, yeah. but I mean, I do. I'm yeah. pretty sure I, I have ADD because I see it in my son. Yeah. Because he can't read one page without like yeah. I have no idea what just what was on that page. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm the same way. And he is diagnosed. Yep. So I've diagnosed myself through his diagnosis. Yeah, through his. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone I know that has ADD is I like, got worse than them. So. <laughs> so like, I mean, yes, I have. I do not have ADD. Okay. <laughs> what are you seeing in the market right now? So are you busy in the spring or for you guys? I feel like, you know, typically our spring market in this area starts around February. Yep. 
and we really didn't see that pop in February. I feel like in the last four weeks mm -hmm. is when the spring market has popped. Yeah. And so it feels like it has moved later into the year, which is bizarre because yeah. it's, it's new. Yep. Um, but I'm definitely seeing a lot more come on yeah. the market. A ton of buyer, pent up buyer yeah, need, that, yeah. low inventory, but the inventory is definitely starting to pick up yeah. a little bit. But it's just a later spring start. Yeah. How do we get more inventory? I actually don't know this. I mean, I think one of the issues is you've got all these people locked in with 3% mm -hmm. sub and sub rates, so they're just never going to sell. Like, what is the answer to get more inventory, in your guys' opinion? Like, even if it's not this year, next year, or in the future? You know, the, the 3%. I think it does play a role, but it mm -hmm. plays less of a role now, two years later, yep. than when rates went from three to six, because two years of life have passed by. So sure. if you were kind of on the edge of selling back then, now you're, pent, you're a pent-up seller. Like, yep. you really need to sell. And it's a struggle here because it's like chicken on the egg. You know, sellers, if you're going to sell here, there's no place to go, so you kind of have to take a risk and mm -hmm. sell and then try and find something. If you're selling here and moving out of the area... No You're brainer. fine. Yeah. It's like a, yeah, definitely a no-brainer. There's a lot of other markets around the country that are not sellers' markets, so you're yeah. doing well. So just moving here is kind of a challenge. But yeah. I, I think uh, you know we, 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 the builders are getting some increase. Mm -hmm. um, we are starting, as Janet just said, in the last four weeks we're starting to see a lot, a lot of buyers. You, you see a lot more inventory coming across, and I think people are starting to say, you know what, I can't be here anymore. So I'm yeah. going to go ahead and put the house on the market. But to get more houses on the market, it's really tough. We've, yeah. We both put out flyers, you know, like most agents do. You put out stuff to people like, if you've got a, you know, if you're going to sell, I've got a thousand buyers for you. Yeah. But it's 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 a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that is the good news, though. I mean, that the, you're going to get a great price if you're selling. Yep. And if you're, I mean, like you said, if you're moving out of the market, it seems like a no-brainer. How often are you guys seeing that, where, like, people are actually moving out of the market versus, like, if you had to pr give percentages? Versus people stay in versus moving uh, out. Does that increase compa more? Compared to the lockdown? Yeah. Or very little. Yeah. Because lockdown, people just fled. Yeah. Uh, but now, now it's mostly, what do you say, a job relocation maybe? Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? I say it's a minimal amount. Yeah. I think there are still people yeah. who are moving. It's just like they need to, you know, they're either having children and they need more space or they have children exiting the house. Yeah. So I think... It, for what we're seeing is the majority is just local moves. It's not people leaving um, leaving the area. Gotcha. Yeah. No, yeah. It, as a matter of fact, I just talked to a client today. She bought a house uh, 20 months ago. And she called me today and said, it's been almost two years, and I realized that my daughter and I don't need a 7,000 square foot house. Right. Um, yep. And so life goes on. You know, yeah. we realize, okay, like you know, I just said, life changes, and... People yep. end up doing something. Yep. Greg, you were a panelist talk, uh, t talking about branding and creating an image. Yep. And, uh, you know, what would you recommend for someone getting new into the real estate industry? How to create a brand? You know, I'm a little old school, and so things have changed. You know, you do, used to do a lot of print advertising and mailers and things of that nature, which helps keep you top of mind and help you create a brand a little bit. And I think that still could be part of your branding profile or branding repertoire. But I think social media is probably one of the most important things you have to do uh, because every end user is going to be on it. Yeah. And it's, it's easy, um, it's relatively cheap, and you can do it as often as you want. Um, and so it helps keep you top of mind. I, I don't like to do it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not good I'm at it. I've seen more and more from you guys. Oh, yeah. You do a good job at it. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, yeah. that's, that's all our social media person. Uh, yeah. we, we, we know we have to do it. Uh, we would do it if we, if we had literally had to we don't want to take the time yeah because we're not good at it it takes it, it's an evolving medium mm -hmm. yeah so sure. it requires a lot of research you know to keep abreast of it and so we hired someone to do that for us and we just tell her what we're trying to accomplish sure. on our social media and that's what we do and i would recommend if someone's coming on board that they reach out to someone get an idea of who that person is that agent is and, and ask that person who's helping them to make them as authentic as possible and that's you know, that's what we did. We yeah. want to be 100% authentic. We want to be different than every other agent out there. So yeah. we specifically hired someone who's not real estate related. What do you want people to see? Yes. What is your brand? What mm -hmm. are you trying to sell to people? And for Greg and I, we we hired this woman who happened to be a friend of ours. She's an influencer, um, and she's just, she has no 
real estate experience. Yeah. And that's what we wanted. Yep. She knows us, and we said, we want you to help us build our brand. We, we want to be ourselves. We want to yeah. be authentic. We don't want to throw up stats every day of houses sold, and, and that's mm. fine. Um, and we do a little bit of that, but it's like, who are we? And so when she when she films us, it's like doing what we're doing naturally. Yeah. Um, and I think that has really helped us. But I think the answer is, when you're building your brand, what do you want people to see? Yep. Yep. And that's important. Yep. And that's a good way to simplify it. Um, I was, there was a, I was speaking at a conference recently and, and someone brought this up, like he gets tons of followers on Instagram and his whole thing was, I don't look for anything in the real estate industry. I look at all the other industries and I find out oh. what's the, what do I yeah. watch yeah. that's like entertaining. Yeah. Right. And he built stuff around that, yeah. which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Um, also, like you said, it is ever changing. Like this morning I was talking with a consultant and he, they have an agency that focuses on Instagram and YouTube and, the, and they are all so very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the YouTube mm -hmm. marketing, long form videos, you want to keep people on as long as possible. Yeah, there's this random title company I met last week who's in North Carolina who's now got a million followers. I'm like, what, well, a million wow. for a title company? That's and I already know it was a million views, a million views. But still, it's on yeah. just like yeah. title content. Right. Like you wouldn't yeah. think that would ever yeah. be possible. So anyway, I'm starting to meet with these guys and like yeah. try to learn from them. And that's lot. one of the reasons why I was invited on that panel because the panelist who's a, a realtor up in Frederick and a, and a friend of mine, we refer each other business back and forth. He wanted, he got on the panel, he had... Um, a creative marketing director mm -hmm. and another website de designer and then me which I didn't I didn't understand why I was there because I didn't <laughs> feel like it fit in and he's, he said I brought you on because whenever I see your Instagram I know that that's great because mm -hmm. that's the same guy that I've known for eight years well, it's and so that's all the stuff you're talking yeah, about that's working yeah. and, and they're doing a good that's job that's what we're trying to accomplish yeah. just so that when you see me it's the same so um, I have these random things I think about right and so like one of them is if you ever run a marathon, you're a hard worker. I, I don't know, how could you not be? <laughs> right? If you run a marathon, you're the kind of person I want to work for my company because you have to be dedicated and be. A, yeah. Anyway, you've run many marathons. Yeah. I understand. Yes. Uh, how many? Seven. What? Yeah. That's nuts. Um, are you, have you done half marathons also? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I started like small yeah. 5Ks, 10Ks, 10 milers. Half marathons, and I still like pepper those in because mm -hmm. they're not as grueling, yeah. challenging. And I've done dabbled in triathlons uh, a few years ago, so yeah, marathon is um, anyone can do it. It's tenacity, mm -hmm. right? It's realizing you're going to be uncomfortable, yep. and just being comfortable being uncomfortable. And um, I, I enjoy it. I mean, my body is not enjoying it as much as it mm -hmm. used to, yeah. but um, I do enjoy it. It's it's. I have my plan every week, this is what I'm going to be doing, and generally I have friends. My last training, yep. um, I've always had friends run with me, but this last year, everyone's like, I'm out, I'm done with training for marathons. But every weekend I had someone who would meet me, like, I'll run five miles with you, and then someone said, I'll pick up the next five miles with you. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice. I had, I had support along the way, which yeah. is really nice. Um, even during the marathon, I had a couple of friends join me. Nice. Are you running through. them all across the country? Or are you mostly like... in this area? Yeah. Um, yes, mostly in Virginia. I've done like the DC um, Rock and Roll, done Marine Corps, done Richmond. So mm -hmm. um, I've traveled for the triathlons, um, and that's tough yeah. when you're traveling because your sleep cycle gets messed up. You're in a different place, and you yeah. got all your gear. So I tend to like to stay local. Has he joined you on one of these yet? No. He has brought me yeah. um, nutrition yes, on my yeah. long runs. He has right, definitely so. showed up with and bananas. He has and, yes, he, yeah, he yeah. has. He has. Yeah. So he's been there, but no, he hasn't run it. Nice. Yes. Fun fact: um, I worked at Acted.com for like oh, three years yeah. when I lived in California. And so, they, for those that don't know, they take the race registrations for all the triathlons, yeah. marathons, all that kind of stuff. So I got a little bit in that world because okay. everyone's like in great shape, and they're like, "You're not going to run a triathlon at lunch?" I'm like, sure. <laughs> so I did. No, I love that website because yeah. I go on. I'm like, "What did I run? Which race did I run that year? And what was my time?" So yeah. I love. And then I just see my times are getting slower and slower, and then I, then I put it away. <laughs> exactly. What was the longest triathlon? A half Ironman. Ooh, that's legit. That's half legit. Ironman. Okay. So I, did, I did an Olympic. Okay. Which was a lot for me. I did some sprints and then I did one yeah. Olympic, almost died, but um, that's impressive. Half sprints half. are fun. 
Yeah, it's hard. Half, half Iron Man is, it's a lot. That's a lot. lot. It's a lot of training time. It takes a lot of time away from your family. So, rarely, uh, when I'm working out, so actually, rarely do I run anymore, but I will say when you're running, you get those, like, thoughts coming, right? Like, your creative juices get mm-hmm. flowing. Um, is that, like, part of the reasons you like running? Like, do you get the ideas going, part of the... I do. There's a few things, a few things that I, I, I love. One, it, it's a stress reliever. Mm-hmm. And my son asked me the other, the other day, he goes, is there really such a thing as runner's high? And I'm like, yes, there's a point where the endorphins kick in and you just feel good. Mm-hmm. I love that. I chase that. I do get ideas. Like, if there's something that I'm noodling and I can't figure out, I will sort of, like, work it through yeah. when I'm quiet. Right. It is super helpful. It's also kind of like a happy hour without the booze yeah. when my friends run with me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's with my friends because yeah. we, we get to catch up. We yep. get to sort of air out whatever is going on. So when we come home, we're not bringing that home. Yep. So I, I, there are multiple reasons why I love running. Yeah, I've been doing total lately. Okay. I mean, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Coaches. It's been great, by the way. I, like know, and I don't know really anyone else that has it. So maybe I'm I know the one person who likes yeah. it. <laughs> But it's awesome. I, and you know, but it's it's just all about stress relief for me yeah. right now. Yeah. With like twenty five kids or whatever I have now, <laughs> it's just like pure stress relief, and like you just have to do it. You feel that <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's, it's it's the getting there that's the hardest. Yeah, and I even exactly. like that with marathons. It's the starting that's the hardest. Once you start it, yeah, it, it's all good. Summer's coming up. Any fun trips planned? Not yet. We were just yeah. talking about it as we walked in here. We're like, it's so nice. We should be at the beach. Yeah, it is. So we better nice. plan something. Yeah. 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 Uh, best beach that you go to or favorite beach or easiest beach you get well, to? Well, we love to go to Cancun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. I yeah. do remember you guys telling me this. Yeah. You got married there? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good memory. Yeah. Yeah. Well yeah. done. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that ADD did not yeah. give me in that <laughs> yeah. day. We yeah. told yeah. that. <laughs> uh, one thing you always have at your desk? Not on my desk, but yeah. at my desk at my feet is my dog. Okay. At all times. Yeah, I like it. I like it. An app you can't live without. What's an app? An, an app. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, probably Waze. Yeah. You know, I was looking at my phone. Or obviously, I use quite a few every day. Mm-hmm. But Waze probably has the one I really can't live without. I think it's a really good point. So my car, when I put it in, it will not take HIV lanes. And I called them up, and they're like, it was too much of a risk to uh, to know which way traffic's going, so we won't do it. I'm like, all right, whatever. But ways, I mean, the amount of time it saves you by taking it on HIV, I don't, f- even though Google owns ways, I feel like when I'm on Google Maps, it doesn't take no. me nearly as fast no, routes. It's, it's not the same. If real estate didn't exist, what would become, what would be your dream job now? Would it be something that I'm good at or something I could just do because I want to do it? Whatever you want to do. I would want to be a singer. I would love to be yeah. like Taylor Swift. Does she have a great voice? Yeah, she's got a great voice. No. See, I, this, that's this why, why I said. This is why we do this. Yeah. Always find out things I don't know about. Yeah. She's got a great voice. He's saying that because he's she's, my husband. Well, she's got a great voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we want to hear it sometime. Is it possible we can get you to sing like that? No. <laughs> I didn't it's think crazy. so, but no, this is good. <laughs> Biggest real estate pet peeve? I've got a few. Yeah, well, uh, I can hear multiple. Okay. Uh, tardiness. Yep. I'll, I'll do two because Jan's got one. Uh, and unprofessionalism by agents on the other side. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's always going to be unprofessionalism in any industry, but I think when we had the lockdown, and yeah. it was easy for agents. Either agents got sloppy or new agents came in and didn't understand the professionalism mm-hmm. sure. uh, aspect to real estate. And that, that bothers me. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I, even in listings, you know, people were very articulate in their listings and they would just for photos, they, they talked about the photos yeah. of the home. Now, agents, you know, two, three, four million dollar homes, there's no description of the home at all. all right. You know, so there's this lack of professionalism. And, I, you know, I, I hold our industry in a very high standard, mm-hmm. and I think the better agents do. Um, but some of them just think it's another sales job. Yeah, sure. Uh, as a title company, we see all the fights. You know, like, yeah, we're the middleman, sure. right? So like, we see both sides, and you know who the good agents are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah for sure. Yeah, exactly. I have a pet peeve. Can I share it? Yes. Keys and door doorknobs. Ninety percent of the time, when I get a key out of a lockbox, yeah. I cannot figure out how to open the stinking door. I'm like, this key doesn't work, or yeah. it's stuck. It's the worst, and it might just be me, because when you open them, no problem. 
but I yeah. always have a problem getting a key into a door. I know what you're yeah. talking about. Like, there's certain keys, if you push it all the way in, it doesn't work. Right. So you gotta pull it out just a yes. little bit. Or you gotta turn the handle up. Yeah. And like, no, ah. no, no, I know exactly And it's what you're really about. awful when you have a buyer standing, client standing yeah. there, and you're like, I can't get that open. Is, and that is stressful. Start sweating. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, this is normal. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's yeah. <laughs> supposed to work. I like that. I like that. Most bizarre client request you've ever received? This is for both of you guys. Last question. Oh. Not really a request, mm -hmm. but I had a client, I was selling their house and they had to move out of the house across country. And the house started, it was overgrowing with weeds and vines and so forth. And they refused to hire a landscaper okay. to yeah. come and trim it. Yep. So I spent almost two full days landscaping. I had pictures I said yeah, in the yeah. like yeah. I was drenched. With gloves. Yeah. yeah. Pulling like rose bush weeds, like it yep. was a disaster. Listen, that's the one thing so the house I bought, I'm in Seminary Ridge, mm -hmm. Alexandria. Yep. And this was two thousand sixteen and there's this house, so I'd been I was in California and I was watching on Zillow this house. Because I knew I wanted to go in that neighborhood if I could. It was like 1.3 at the time, then it was 1.15, and then I was going to go back to rent a house that weekend. It was down to one million. The one thing I look back on, they redid it, they flipped it. It was really nice inside, but there was no grass in the front lot, and there was no bushes, and they had orange shutters, or, or orange shutters on a red brick house. Ooh. It was oh. like the worst, <laughs> like. Front of the house view you could oh, ever see. The inside was appeal. great. Yeah. Great curb appeal. I mean, I would painted the as soon as I got it. The next day for two hundred fifty dollars, we painted the shutters. Yeah. We put in bushes and I mean, it was like a new house. Yeah. yeah. But like uh, you, curb I mean, you guys time. know what you're doing. You know how to like recommend suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to your agent. Yeah. Yeah. And curb appeal matters. Well, totally. but I'm always a silver lining, half full kind of guy. That's a benefit to you though, because they didn't it, do that. It actually was. Yeah. 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 Because you know. It, it, that turns buyers off. Yeah. You know, a lot of buyers can't see past that. You're like, oh, I want this house. I don't care what it looks like on the outside. Yeah. I can fix that in a minute. Well, so for those, uh, so Platinum Partners, mm -hmm. um, love the team name, love the branding. You guys have done a great job. Thank you. Uh, for those that want to work with you guys, what's the best way to find you, get in touch with you? PlatinumPartnersRealty.com. Yep. Yeah. Or your phone number, 571-329-3732, mine. Two four zero six eight eight seven seven eight eight. It's a lot of numbers. Love it. Love it. Yeah. That's good. Janet at Compass, Greg. Yeah. No, and by the way, how are how are you enjoying the move to Compass? We liked it. We love it. We yeah. love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I, I mean, most. I mean, almost everyone I talk to that's yeah. moved there, they talk about how much they love it and the culture. Yeah, and, it's it's great. Uh, I, I don't know how Robert Rifkin has done it. You know, you, every culture from every firm is top down. Yeah. And that's where it comes from. Um, but as large as the company is, with over thirty thousand yeah. agents. Uh, the culture it has been maintained. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. It's awesome. Well, great seeing you guys. Great Look seeing you. to our annual dinner, which Absolutely. we're going to be doing at? Lardent. Yes, exactly. Perfect. So, <laughs> great seeing you guys. Thanks for coming. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.